Good. You can hear, you hear us? us? Are you are you here, Dylan? Yeah, I'm here. All right, Dylan Cousins joins the show finally. Mike, are you sitting in a toilet somewhere? Where are you? Oh, I'm in my like, I look like a little uh, gaming studio, kind of. Wow, look at that. Life's good now. You signed the big ticket. You got a gaming studio. A lot's changed since we've talked last, Dylan. My goodness. Yeah, so should we should we talk about the beatdown last night, seven to one going in to the third? It was three to one. It was a game, and then you guys just completely imploded. Or should we just move past that? I think as a team, you probably move past it, right? Yeah, we should probably move past that. All right. So we were to we'll move past. We won't we won't touch on it. Boston's a good team. We're talking about the Jacob Chitron trade. What did you think of that? The teams in the East, everybody's getting everybody. Did you think Ottawa stole that guy from Arizona? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, seeing the trade rumors last year and everything that, you know, what, you know, he was going to go for. And um, I think guys were a little surprised that, you know, that was all he went for. I think, um, you know, we maybe thought he was going to go for a little more. Do you go right to Kevin Adams' door and say, Kev, what we don't got a first rounder, we can throw Arizona's way? Come on, my man. What did you did you call him right away? Oh, I didn't I didn't say anything. That's not my job. That's his job. Oh, oh Tim, that's a cut that up for an ad. Dylan Cousins <laughs> going after Kevin Adams. My goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But anyways, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for joining us again. Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, you know, things are really well. Thanks for having me. Do you remember Tim, of course? What's up, man? Hey, how are you doing? So let's get into it. We'll just recap your season because you're having a pretty good season, Dylan. Did you expect this? You got 23 goals, 29 assists, almost a point per game. You guys are playing great. You had a hat trick last week. For, was that your first hat trick in the show? That was my first hat trick, yeah. What do you attribute? from last year to this year because it's a I don't want to say it's a completely different player but you're playing lights out this year what what happened I think um you know a big thing was just confidence and scoring and trusting my shot um I was getting a lot of chances last year that I just wasn't able to you know put the puck in the net and you know I went to the world championships there just to try and you know get that confidence back that goal scoring confidence back and you know I think I you know regained a lot of it there and you know, just came in with that, you know, shooting mentality this year and, you know, wanted to, you know, be a goal scorer. <laughs> Is that all it takes? I really want to be a goal scorer this year. So, you know what? I'm going to be a goal scorer. Do, do you think your line mates play a part in this? And you guys did some really good moves in the offseason. Obviously, we see Tage Thompson kind of starting to be a superstar in the league. Does that play a part in it? Or is it just kind of you did some shooting in the offseason and now you're scoring more goals? Obviously, I uh, credit a lot of my success to my line mates and our team and, you know, even Donnie, like the system we play, uh, we play a high pace system transition quick where we get lots of, you know, scoring chances and opportunities off the rush. And then you know, I've obviously been playing with great players who have you know helped a lot. Yeah, touch on Tage for a minute, because he's been a good player in this league for a couple of years, but he's on an entirely another level, like skating with him every day, every week. What What is it like to watch this guy break out to be such a superstar? Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, he's just so dominant, you know, in games and practice, it's impossible to get the puck off him. And, um, you know, just being a part of that and watching him explode like that and and be the unbelievable player he is, it's just been so fun to watch. And, um, you know, maybe last year you know, when we were like, holy, this guy just won't stop scoring. And then, you know, this <laughs> whole other level, it's, it's crazy and it's so fun to watch. Yeah, there's a lot of guys in the league that, I mean, he's pretty tall, but there are other tall guys that don't use – their height to their advantage the way that he seems to he just seems to get that and it seems like at another level that i mean we don't have a name any name but other guys can be six seven six eight and they don't they don't use it like he does As you're a pretty tall kid yourself do you kind of see yourself modeling some of that from him yeah i think uh that was something donnie emphasized lots with tage i think was just using his body to protect the puck and, and beat guys with his body instead of just his stick and that's something that he's talked to me a lot about as well as you know, just using my my body because I'm I still got a pretty big body and long reach, and and using that to protect pucks and and beat guys instead of always just trying to go through sticks. Do you feel comfortable now? Because let's be honest, when you look at the Eastern Conference, Dylan, you're playing 
a Stanley Cup contender almost every single night. And I would say you might be the shut shutdown line on your team. You're going up against some high end guys. Do you put yourself in that, you know, status of a shutdown guy, a guy who's going to put up 82 points because you're an all-star caliber player now? How does that feel to know that you've kind of taken that next step? Like, do, have you embraced it? Does it ever, you ever just sit down and go, holy cow, like, the, what am I doing? I think sometimes, I mean, it's kind of always the standard I set for myself is, you know, I want to be a, you know, above average guy in the NHL and, and uh, someone who's relied on in all situations. So, um, you know, I do kind of see myself as that 200 foot guy and, and uh, you're playing with Tage. He's, he's obviously that number one offensive guy. And, you know, I kind of want to embrace that role, maybe being the more defensive centerman and, you know, that, that uh, maybe plays against the tougher matchups to try and give, Palmer, um, you know, easier matchups to, you know, take advantage and score the way you can score. So what's different from this year to the last couple of years, because the last couple of years, you guys play great. And we had other guys on the show. We had Risto on, we had you on, we had a, a couple other Sabres on and it, it was almost expected. It's like, okay, the Sabres are going to win a bunch, then they're going to lose. And then they're the same old Sabres. I played there. It was that way still when I was there 10 years ago. Why is this year different? It, it's, it's, the turnover isn't really that great. You still have the same group of guys. What's different this year from last year or the year prior? I think uh, maybe kind of the standard we have set for ourselves. Um, that second half last year when we got our full lineup in, we got Tucky playing. Um, you know, I think we had a really good second half. We were, uh, we were playing, beating a lot of good teams. Uh, and so that was kind of the standard we had set for ourselves is, you know, we – yeah, we're a young team and, you know, we're rebuilding, but um, we can still win at the same time. And, and obviously we're not going to win every night, but um, you know, that's, you know, that's our expectation now. Um, we don't, we don't want to be a losing team anymore. We want to win and we want to make playoffs and we want to make playoffs now. So when you go back to Whitehorse, do you just walk into town and just like, I'm home. I'm just come and shower me with accolades. I'm Dylan cousins, the one who got out and made it big what's what's the what's it like when you walk downtown whitehorse yukon i would say i mean it's i just feel like another person there kind of um dylan stop do you get recognized everywhere you go not crazy i mean i know a lot of people i know like it's just it's a lot of people i see that i grew up with so um you know, it's, it's nothing crazy. It's not like I'm some celebrity that they freak out. I'm just, I'm just another U UConn grown kid that, um, you know, just plays hockey. I mean, it's, there's uh, so many of them in the NHL. You're right. And just another one of the UConn NHL stars. The one, Hey Tim, all of them. Who's the, is there any other one from UConn, the white horse who has made the show? I mean, there's, there's two two guys I think like a long time ago that combined for eight games or something, but there is there's someone coming. There's another player coming, uh, Gavin McKenna. He's I don't know if you guys have heard his name yet, but he's he just got drafted first overall in the WHL and four points in his first game in the WHL as a 15 year old. So he's coming. he ain't gonna make it. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> no, he's not gonna make it. So let's let's move back to the Sabres. You guys are sniffing the playoffs. You mentioned you have set that standard. And who does set that standard, by the way? Because in that room, there's some vets. Obviously, you got Kyle Poso, you got Jeff Skinner, but you have this young core who are kind of pushing this team up the standings. Who sets the standard? Is is it is it Ocposo? Is it Skinner? Is it you guys? Is it everybody? Is it the coach? Who's the one who says, you know what? I'm not, I'm tired of this. Let's go. I mean, I'd say collectively it's, it's, it's everyone in the organization from, you know, from Kevin down to Donnie to the players. I mean, that's kind of the culture we we built and, you know, it, it starts with Hawk Pozo. Obviously he's a great, he's a great captain. He's you know, one of the best guys I've ever probably met in my life. And, um, you know, he's just, he's leading the way great. And I mean, he, he's been on playoff teams, so he, he knows, um, you know, he knows what it takes. All right. So what, what do we expect then? We have what, 20, ish games left do you guys look at the standings are you are you peaking you have some games in hand on the aisles you know you got some room to make up some ground what's the conversation like are are you glancing at the standings or it's like one game at a time the old usual boring shtick i mean that's that's what we got to say right is what was one game at a time but we 
I mean, we know how tight it is. I mean, there's so many teams that are within a few points of each other. It's, it's pretty crazy. So um, we know that every game matters. Every point matters. Um, but we are trying to just, you know, take it one one day at a time. I mean, you know, after the loss yesterday, I mean, it's in playoffs, you're going to lose. Um, and, you know, that's what Oki is, is emphasizing lots. We're not going to win every game in this last push here. And, and when you lose, you got to just be able to reset and get ready for the next one. And this is, I don't know if you can even answer this, but I've been on teams, you know, in the playoff hunt, been on bad teams. Is it, what's it like a trade deadline? Because you, you have a good team, but I think everybody can see that maybe this isn't the year to win the Stanley cup, but you can see the places are there for that potential in a few years. Do you want Kevin to go out? you know, and swing for the fences and go out and get, you know, a, a Timo Meyer or a Kaner or these guys, or are you, you okay with kind of standing pat with the group that you have? Yeah, I think, I think we're all good staying with what we got. I mean, it's, it's worked pretty well this year. And I mean, you could say a lot of us aren't even in our primes yet. So, you know, you don't want to break up any team chemistry or, or do anything like that at this point. Um, but uh, at the same time, if we did, we'd be ready for that too. But at the end of the day, um, our job is to just go out there and play. So that's you know what we're trying to do. That's a good answer, Dylan. I wanted you to say something different, <laughs> but that's a good answer. Well, then, what is it like when you when you look at the the ticker? Because everybody follows the ticker, and you're like, okay, well, well, that guy went to the Islanders. That guy went to the Rangers. Oh, that guy went to Toronto. Oh, that guy went to Boston. Oh, Tampa Bay got somebody. Oh, here comes Carolina. Oh, look at the Rangers got somebody else. Oh, look, Toronto just got that guy too. Oh my goodness, the Senators, they got a couple guys. And you guys don't do anything. Is it a little daunting to know that now you got – and you played the Bruins last night. And I don't even think – was Bertuzzi playing? So everybody's getting better. Is is there is there a certain sense where it's like, oof, what a, it's going to be a little tougher now? I mean, we just all got to step up our game, I think. Uh, yeah, you do. Love it. Trust the group that we have, and, you know, everyone plays a part. So, um, you know, we all know that these next 20, 20 some, 22 games, I think we have, we all got to, you know, kick it into another year. All right. I get it. It's a very diplomatic, and I know you can't say anything, but I know when I was playing, I was like, gosh, go and get somebody. Let's go. Like Kaner and Tarasenko. Come on. Could have got him. But anyways, moving on. You're four points behind the Islanders. What is the vibe, especially after that loss? What What is said in that locker room? Because I've been a part of some really epic losses myself. What's the vibe? You guys close the door. The guys are not happy after the game. What's said? I mean, you know, a loss is a loss, whether you lose by one goal or you lose by six like we did last night. I think, um, you know, it's, it's a loss either way. Um, so... You just got to take what you can from it. And just like I said before, you're going to lose in playoffs, get ready for the next game. You've, uh, we're talking about players kind of breaking out or, or playing their best hockey this year. Jeff Skinner is a guy who's taken a lot of criticism in the last couple of years, mostly for the contract. He was one of the first guys to sign a major $9 million contract like that. But this year he's played very, very well. He's probably going to score 30 to 35 goals. He's, he's doing something almost every night. What have you seen kind of from him reflourishing this year? Yeah, I think he, you know, he's put in some tough situations a, a few years before. And, and uh, I mean, he's he's stepped it up a lot last year, got back to, you know, 30 goals, I think. And then he's this series, he's playing great again. I mean, our top line with Tom or Tucky and Skinny is just so dominant. I mean, they score so many goals. So uh, that line is a lot of fun to watch. And Skinny is, he's such a fun player to watch. Uh, just the way he you know, mohawks around the ice and the way he scores goals too is, is really impressive. What's your nickname, Dylan, on the team? Uh, Cuz, Cuzzy, Cuzzy. Yeah. I like the the Tucky, the skinny too. I like that. We were just talking yeah. about it before we came on. My nickname was just John, Big John. It's the worst. <laughs> Cuzzy's a good one. All right. Were you part of that uh, that video he did between two stalls with Tuck? Were you involved uh, at all? I not with his episode, but I got my own episode coming. So. No, it was really funny. I had no idea he had the personality. He was very, he's like a comedian. He's really good. It's hilarious. Who, Jeff Skinner? Yeah. What did he do? 
He did an interview uh, with talk like called Between Two Stalls. There was like uh, that Between Two Ferns comedy show, and he was interviewing. It was, it was really funny. Did he, was he coming up with that all, all that on by himself? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he wrote the whole script and everything. <laughs> so good. When's your episode coming out? I'm not sure. I think there's still a few more that need to drop before mine, but we'll see. Hopefully soon. Is, is that what we're doing in the locker room these days? Doing comedy skits? <laughs> Just, uh, you know, trying to humanize ourselves, I guess. Does Georgie Babcock get a, a skit? I don't know if he would. I don't know if he could do that without getting himself fired. <laughs> he might get himself fired. That guy. He's the equipment guy, Tim. He's one of a kind. All right. Well, so you're not going to give us any information on this or that. <laughs> Tim, what should we ask him? Because Dylan's not giving us much. What should we talk about with Dylan? I got a few more teammates I want to ask about. Um, Owen Power is not really putting up crazy points yet, although pretty good for a rookie. What have you seen from him when he's not getting on the stat sheet? He's still contributing in other ways, and he's so big. Like, talk about another guy using his size. What are you seeing from him out of his rookie season? I mean, he's – I think he's been outstanding. Just his his poise and, and passing ability and his, the way he sees the ice is is incredible. I mean, he's he's so poised out there. He, he does look like a, an NHL vet. You know, I think it's only his rookie year and he's just going to keep getting better every year is, is exciting. Um, you know, to have those two guys in Darlene and OP, I mean, that's a, a pretty scary uh, start to the decor for sure. We had um, Demers, Jason Demers on the show like two years ago, right after that pick, right after that draft. And uh, he skated with Owen over at the at the Olympics, I think, in China. And uh, he was like talking about, like, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm an NHL player. I've got a nice career. And then I see this kid. He's taller than me. He's stronger than me. He's faster than me. He's better looking than me. Like some kids just have it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another kid I want to ask about is Darlene. Is he like, he's putting himself in the conversation for best defenseman in the league at this point. Like he's having an incredible season. What have you seen from him? He's, yeah, he's stepping up again. And he just continues to step it up every year, I think. This year he's he's really fine in his game and just you know I mean being you know the silky defenseman he he, he was when he got drafted and just uh, you know undressing guys left and right but he also he can he can lay the body pretty well too and he, and he can shoot the puck so uh, I mean he's been he's been unbelievable nice and then uh, Craig Anderson John was asked a couple of weeks ago who he thought should get uh, the fan vote for the All Star game he put Craig Anderson's number his name out there John what was your reasoning behind that. Well, he's the, he's a crap. Tim always makes fun of me. I love Craig Anderson. Tim hates him. He thinks he no, sucks. No, you're trying to say that he was better than Carey Price. And that's what I, I do think he is better than Carey Price. If I'm having a goalie for one game between Carey Price and Craig Anderson, I'm taking Craig Anderson. I'm sure. Well, Carey Price doesn't even play the game anymore. That might be why. But no, how, how neat is it to have a guy who's 41 in the locker room? Is it weird because Owen Power's 20? How old are you? 23? 22. 22, Tim. It's 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 not right. Is it weird that like on the bus he's reading books because he doesn't know what a video game is? His cell phone is a flip phone. Is it strange to have that just generational gap? Like he is a Gen Xer. You're a Gen Zer. I mean, I'll I'll tell you right now, he definitely uh, knows what a video game is. This guy is Every time we're on, he's on. He's playing Call of Duty and everything. So we we play with him lots. It's it's it is pretty crazy. I mean, I met him. He was in the Yukon for some charity game during the uh, one of the lockouts, I think, or some some reason they were up there. I can't remember. And I met him when I was 10, 11 years old. So and I'm playing alongside him. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, and you know, he is still he is still a really good goalie for sure. All right. Well, let's just talk about the league. Because you're not going to give us any juice. Well, let's talk about this. On the plane, in the locker room, in the dinner room, who do you hang out with? What's life like in the Sabres organization? Because when I was there, they were throwing money at us, trying to figure out how to win. Now that we're winning, what's it like? Is it fun in the locker room? How are the plane rides? What do you guys do? Give us a little inside information with the Buffalo Sabres. Now that you finally have a team that's somewhat competitive. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I think everyone's excited to come to the the rink every day. Uh, everyone hangs out with pretty much everyone uh, on the planes. Everyone, a lot of guys are snapping cards. Not too many guys sleep. Everyone's doing something with someone for the most part. It seems like. And on our off days, we're usually you know hanging out on someone's couch and 
playing some video games or whatever. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're really tight as a team and we're also really good friends. So, you know, it makes every day fun. What's the nightlife like in Buffalo? <laughs> Uh, there's, there's not much nightlife, if I'm being honest. I mean, there's there's a there's Chippewa Street. Uh, you can usually only go there on Saturdays, I would say, if there's to see any sort of nightlife. But I mean, our, most of our nightlife just consists of sitting on someone's couch and hanging out. Tim, I'm very disappointed because we had Seth Jarvis on the show. Do you know Seth at all? I I know him a little bit. Yeah, I played. Uh, I was at a World Junior camp with him. I thought you were going to say you played video games with them, and it wouldn't surprise me. I, I want you guys to go out and experience life, Dylan. Come on. What kind of car are we driving these days? I got a Mercedes C63S. So. I don't know what that means. Is that a convertible? Is that an SUV? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a sedan, but, I mean, it's pretty fast. It's it gets around Buffalo in that snow, the slush? Uh, when, they, when it's snowy, I usually don't drive it. But for the most part, I mean, there's been – a few storms this year, but there's almost been no snow other than the storms. Well, you got a million feet in one day. Has it all gone now? To oh, yeah, it was away? a few days after that whole crazy blizzard. What do you bench in these days? Uh, I I don't I haven't hit much bench during the season. Uh, I don't know. I. It's a good question. I can I can try tomorrow and get back to you if you want. We to had a guy on what what was the Detroit Red Wings guy? Soderblom. Yeah. The big Soderblom guy. He yeah. said he put up like 300 pounds. And I'm like, no, you don't, Elmer. That's you're lying to me. So I'm glad you didn't say a wild number. What do you do during the season then, Dylan? What do you well, train? I with? I mean, my I believe it. My my max bench was 295 one time. I got witnesses to back that up too. Did you I, bounce it? Did I bounce it? Bounce it off your chest. Shattered my sternum if I tried that. Take your shirt off. Let me see. <laughs> we won't post it. Two ninety five. How much do you weigh? Uh, right now I'm probably one ninety five. That's pretty. Not two ninety five. Swear, I I used to hammer bench pretty good. I mean, I couldn't do it right now. That's that's my mid program. Like that's my peak. I mean, that's not happening all the time i wouldn't be able to do that right now so. that's that's end of summer lifts you're doing that yeah, that's end of summer like one rep i've done it once for one time that's it man that's that's a lot i've never done anywhere near that so i'm mid creatine load like when, yeah it doesn't last long during the season do you do your steroids and then stop doing them like a month before the season because you're going to get tested or do you just try to hide it and mask it i just try and mask it that's I'm, smart. I'm See, kid, thumbs up. You shouldn't say that. You're going to get tested for sure tomorrow <laughs> without a doubt. Look at he's drinking water now. He's getting nervous. He's got to flush it out of his system. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question. You just signed a big contract, but it doesn't kick in until next year. So do you go out and make yourself a big purchase like after you put ink to paper or you wait until that big check comes next year? Uh, I don't really know. I, I already bought a house in Buffalo, so there's nothing crazy big really coming my way. I might... I might look at some cars, maybe something a little more appropriate for Buffalo, but I don't know. I'm not too sure yet. There's nothing really coming my way that I need. No diamond rings for all. any girlfriends? Yeah. Well, maybe a boat. I might get a boat back in the Yukon, fishing boat. Mm, get a Boston Whaler. Those are good. Who's the strongest guy on on Buffalo? Strongest? I would I'd go either Gergensons or Ocposo. That's not that's not what I expect. None of the tall guys. All right. Well, what do you guys expect the rest of the season, Dylan? Well, I don't want to waste any more time. You got to go game with Craig Anderson. What's the expectations for Buffalo? You squeak into the playoffs and then you face the juggernaut Boston Bruins in the first round. What do you think? What what can we expect from the the Buffalo Sabres for the rest of the year? Yeah, we we expect to be in in a playoff spot by the time the season ends. I mean, that's that's what we expect. We know it's not going to be easy. You know, there's a lot of other teams and that are right there with us. Um, so, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to take a lot, but uh, that's where we expect to be for sure. And personally, you, what's the goal to end the year? You already have 50 some points. Do you have a personal goal in mind that you want to hit? Um, I mean, I would love to hit 30 goals, I guess. <laughs> um, but I mean, at, right now, um, 
uh, all the folks is making playoffs. I mean, it's it's nice to kind of get my contract extension out of the way this year, whereas all I can do now is just focus on playoffs. So, um, you know, that's that's the main goal. And you've only fought one time this year. Early on, friend of the show, Brendan Lemieux. Or oh, that was last year. Why not? Why no fights this year? What's been going on? Have you been turning fights down? I... I would say I've tried to fight a few times now and I've been turned down a few times, but I mean, I, I wasn't going out looking for him. I didn't want to, you know, injure myself, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a dumb way like that in a contract year. Um, but I mean, I've, I've tried to fight a few times and it hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. Who did you ask? Uh, well, it doesn't matter. It does. <laughs> I don't expose anyone. You know, you should ask Mo Sider and make a big show of it. Because he's been on the show and he said he's never going to fight. Did you see Debrink at Punk him the other day? I did see that. I did see that. that you funny. should do that. Have you been? Have you asked Debrink at the fight? I've not asked Debrink at the fight. No. Who's the toughest guy in Buffalo? Um, I mean, you seen Krebsy? That guy's a little animal out there. Peyton Krebs. Stop. <laughs> Who's the toughest guy in Buffalo? I mean, I. If, I mean, I would probably go with. Toughest guy would probably be Hokey, I would say. I mean, he is not going to fight anymore with his head injuries. Ed, it's you. You got to say yourself, right? Don't you think? I mean, we got Stillman. He's he's tough. He's got a few scraps in him. Riley, I guess. Well, you guys need some toughness. But anyway, any, you got anything? A little rapid fire for him, Tim? Or what are you? What are you doing? No, we did that last time. So yeah, we we covered it all. Dylan, you got any questions for us? <laughs> what do you want to know? Uh, I don't know. That's tough. You didn't give me any time to prepare any questions. I didn't prepare either. That's the problem. I thought we were going to come in and just recap all the trades and you're going to spill some tea and it was going to be great, but you oh. just, you won't give me anything. And you won't even chirp your GM for Pete's sake. What good are you? I got nothing to chirp about. That's true. Yeah. I know you, you guys did great at the deadline. You killed it. Still fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, the deadline's done. What is it, 3 p.m.? Yes. Two yeah. four. No, I guess. Do you do you check your phone regularly, or do you talk to Kevin or anybody before the deadline? Or are you just kind of – because you're part of this team's future. You just, you're locked up for seven years. Are you involved in any of those conversations at all? Not really. No. He's shaking his head. No, this is an audio thing, Dylan. You got to <laughs> – you know what? I could just call in from my phone then. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, Tim. Anything you Wait, got? One. Do you know the Sabres made a trade like 20 minutes ago? Did we? Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, they got Jordan Greenway from um, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. You just, you just added him for wow. a draft pick. Yeah. Oh, just good. nothing off the roster. That's a pretty big ad. That's a big ad. Where does he fit in? He probably fits in on the second line next to Dylan Cousins. I mean, that's that might be a new uh, contender for toughest guy on the team now. Oh, he definitely is the <laughs> toughest guy on your team. That right. guy's a tough cat, Tim. Minnesota just said they weren't going to trade him. Isn't that funny? Yeah, There's... I don't see what the pick is, but. Okay, that's, that's a good ad. Well, who are you going to get rid of on your team then, Dylan? Because you have to get rid of one contract. Which player on the current Buffalo Sabres roster gets sent down to Rochester? If you had to pick. If you had to pick, yeah. <laughs> Still on my entry level, so maybe it'll be. <laughs> We're allowed to keep more guys after the deadline, though, so I don't know. I think, I think it's, it's playoffs. It's playoffs. Some guys are saying after the deadline, you can have as many guys with you. I don't know, though. I I don't know anything about that, but it's they're under the limit. Not, They'll be fine. They're under their cut. No, you got you can only carry twenty three. Oh uh, so. yeah. That's interesting. Good for you. Good, good catch, Tim. All right, Dylan. Well, keep drinking that water. Get those steroids out of your system. I, I really do hope you guys make the playoffs because you're one of those teams where I think you could make some noise because you're so young. I did, say, Tim. What did I say? Who's going to get the wild card spots? Detroit and Buffalo. Well, Who did you say, Tim? I said Penguins and Islanders. I think. What do you think of that, Dylan? Come on. Not looking good. I hope you guys make it. It'll be a lot more fun to watch. I think I do think we're a team that, you know, if we get in there, we could surprise a lot of people, um, you know, just with the way we play. I think we can be any team on any given night. So, yeah, based on last night, I, I really think we should address what you just said. Can we beat Boston earlier in the year? 
<laughs> That's true. I just tease it. I just tease it. It's you got to take it one game at a time. Did you know one time I got beat by the Edmonton Oilers eleven to two? Oh, I was pl- plus nice. one though. I was plus one. Really? Yeah. My claim to fame. Look it up. <laughs> I was in Chicago. I do. I bring it up all the time. What was your plus minus last night? I ate two empty net minuses, so I was minus three. Why did you keep pulling the goalie when it was 6-1? Well, it was 3 nothing. We pulled them. They scored. Then uh, we scored. Got a power play. We pulled them again. And then they scored again. But did they score a couple more times without the goalie pulled near the end? Or two more without the goalie pulled at the end. It was just, yeah. It's... That's the worst. It's just, was that in Buffalo or in Boston? Boston. Oh, that's good. At least you're running home. What's the, what was it like? And I'm going to kind of switch to the bills now what was it like watching the the city go crazy for the bills before they lost in the playoffs it was just like super bowl or bust do you feel that kind of momentum for the sabers a little bit yeah i mean we we obviously have to earn a lot of you know the, the fans back um just with how long we've been out of the playoffs and just seeing them rally together for the bills like that when they get into the playoffs that that for sure gets us excited about you know, knowing that, um, you know, that's, that's going to be us once we start, once we start becoming a, a winning team and making the playoffs and, you know, just seeing the city come behind us like that, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty exciting. Are you a Bills fan? For sure. <laughs> Not out there smashing tables yet, but. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Dylan. All right, man. Well, listen, get some rest. Thank you for joining us. I know it's not ideal on trade deadline to, Hey, who was the best pickup in the East, do you think? You you got Tarasenko, you got Horvat, you got Kane, you got Chitrin, you got O'Reilly, you got Meyer. all these. Yeah, all these Timo Meyer for the Devils. Which one do you think will make the biggest impact? Whew, that's a lot of big ads for sure. I, right. I, I do think that uh, Timo Meyer in New Jersey, I think, is going to be a, a good fit. Just, you know, Jack Hughes is obviously so good. Uh, this year and just adding that if if they play together i think that could be you know a really dangerous duo for sure nice he gets really serious when he answers it don't you notice that (laughs) the voice deepens a little bit and he has that little raspy uh i just think uh politician someday no 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 i'll die before i'm a politician does white horse have a go john poor kid yep I didn't know that. I thought Whitehorse was literally like the Wild West. No, not quite. Uh, you know, we got a little city there for sure. I know. You got a statue yet? Oh. Nope. Rink, rink, rink. You'll what? get a hog. Let's let's do a bet right now, Dylan. I bet you that you will have a rink named after you in Whitehorse <laughs> by the time you're done playing hockey. Okay. You don't you th- how many rinks are up there? Uh there's Two two complexes, three rinks. The smaller one will be named after Dylan Cousins because you're going to win a cup and you're going to bring it back and they're going to want to do something. Oh, it's the Dylan Cousins arena. They did it here in Traverse City, the Dallas Drake. His, his face is all over the arena. There you go. The bet's on for a Mercedes uh, SL300. <laughs> you heard uh, it, Tim. Deal? I did. Dylan? Sounds good. Uh, all right. <laughs> I like to do these long bets so that even if like he can always have a rink named after him, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. We'll let you go, Dylan. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Sorry. I wasn't more prepared. Oh, it's all good. I Tim, anything? Started. No, thanks for coming on, man. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Go meet Jordan Greenway. That's exciting. Big pickup. All right, yeah. everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dylan cousins. Cheers.